Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been about a little over a week and a half or so since I got the, uh, brought the new car, introduced the new car to the channel. Um, that being the Audi S5. So I'll give you a little update since I've had the car. Um, when I got it, obviously I enjoyed the car. Car rode great, this, that, and the other. Uh, however, um, I did notice that there was a small uh, puddle underneath the car after driving it a little bit. So I took the car to get looked at, um, took it back to the dealer. The dealer uh, had the car in the shop for about a week, gave me a loaner. So it's a little different when you move from an MR2 to an S5 and then you get a loaner and then they throw you <laughs> in a Camry. Uh, I was not pleased, but yet and still I was able to have some reliable transportation to get back and forth to work, um, even though I had other vehicles to drive. Long story short, um, I'm getting the car back. I got the car back, actually. Um, and so I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done, what I've experienced since I've owned the car for the last few days in my pos actual possession. So uh, without further ado, I will start letting you, I'll let you see the car and then we'll go over it. All right, so here's the car. Um, it's water underneath the car because I just finished cleaning it up. As you can see, the water hose in the back. Um, here's the car. And uh, so, yeah, um, she's looking real nice, real nice, real clean. Um walk up to it as you see the s5 badging and so forth we already know that it is an s5 uh, it is in the blue it is in the coupe um or the coupe has the um as they say you know uh abroad um it is the supercharged model as we already know um but i did take the time to clean it up brought in some some products nothing major i'll show you what i got I ended up using, uh, let's see what I got here, the tire foam from Armor All, just to kind of clean the tires up. Um, I got some McGuire's Ultimate Shine. Well, this is actually Armor All. I thought this was actually, huh, I'm surprised because normally I use McGuire's. But anyway, so this is Armor All, and they actually did a pretty good job. Ultra Shine Wash and Wax. I was wondering why it was so much cheaper, but now I know because I wasn't paying attention. Um... You know, got some uh, microfiber towels and things that I was using. I tried this multi-purpose cleaner from uh, Ollie's just to kind of get a feel for what it was like. Uh, it's okay just to kind of clean up around the exhaust tip area. Didn't do the best job, as you can see. Uh, there's still smoke black, uh, which I don't really like, which means um, I really need to get in and do some, you know, uh, you know, a little better on the detailing at least on the exhaust tips um but yeah um the car actually rides great uh it does have the keyless entry um as long as the key is in the pocket um have any keys it comes with the s5 on the back of the key um they stamp all these keys um with the s5 logo so um car is still pretty clean on the interior i probably need to do a little interior detailing but for the most part it's pretty clean um got my uh my daughter's uh booster seat she's so happy about moving up to a booster instead of being in the actual um being in the actual car seat so she's happy about that um there isn't a lot of room in this car because it is a coupe so the positives about this car uh, that the car rides extremely well, uh, has ample amount of power. It is not the most overpowered vehicle in the world. I will tell you that the Quattro system is amazing in this car, and there's several modes to this car. So let me walk you through that, give you a heads up. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I don't need the key in the ignition to actually start the car, which is which is great. There is an option to install the key here in the slot here. I can uh, insert the key to start the car, but as long as you have the key on you, you should be able to start the car by pushing your foot on the brake and hitting the start button. So as you can tell, she starts up just fine. She runs fine. As you see, there are only 33,000 miles on this car. 
This car is a 2015 Audi S5 with only 33,000 miles on it. I'm going to insert the key. Um, well, I won't because I, I want to show you something. So, um, in the infotainment system, everything here, it has a little toggle, the toggle um, switch here, which you actually have to turn it counterclockwise in order to make it go up. And, well, let me rephrase, clockwise to go up, counterclockwise to go down or scroll down. So normally um, with American made ingenuity, we normally scroll uh, counterclockwise to go down. I mean to go up and then clockwise to go down. In this case, it's just the opposite. Um, the car has several drive modes like I was explaining to you. So I'll show you. So there is a drive select here. And then the drive select button from what I've observed so far, if you click on the drive select button, it changes from individual. Individual mode is the transmission shifting according to your driving habits. So the car basically reads and understands your level of drivability and where your high points are as far as acceleration, deceleration. So then the transmission actually shifts accordingly. Um, there is also a comfort mode which is exactly that the transmission um, the suspension and everything shifts to a more comfortable riding position for the individual that's driving there's an automatic mode if my camera would focus okay it won't focus right uh, that messed up but anyway there we are so we're focusing so it has the automatic mode for it's shifting at factory specs uh, and then there's dynamic dynamic reverse all power um, and, and it actually, um, so in the case of the dynamic mode, I'm sorry, I have the music and stuff playing in the background. Let me uh, turn that off. Let's see, radio off. That's something that I'm still learning how to do is to turn the radio off. Okay, oh, that's not it either. It's, so I'm still learning the car, so please don't. Uh, you know, don't hurt, don't beat me up too bad about that. Um, but I will just turn the sound down. Um, the car has dual climate control and heated, heated seats. Um, it does have a sunshade for the panoramic glass. Now, the glass itself is just that. It's a panoramic glass. And so, let me turn the car off. And so, the, the thought behind the panoramic glass, which you see up here at the top, is it's more of a moon roof. And so, it doesn't actually open all the way and slide all the way back like most panoramic glasses would. Um, uh, well, panoramic rooftops, I guess you could say. So what I'm saying all in all is that um, overall, um, what is my experience? If you had a younger child, this is probably not the car for you. And even though I have a younger child uh, and she's still in the booster seat, she's a bit older at this point. And so therefore, um, she doesn't require a car seat per se she's over the weight limit she's over the height limit and so she enjoys riding in the car especially when you put it in a dynamic mode am i saying that i put the child in a dynamic mode and and sport driving down the street no i'm not anybody that does that is completely irresponsible however i've explained to her about the dynamic mode and the sport drivability of the car and she's excited that doesn't mean that i'm still going to try it with her because uh that would be irresponsible and I would definitely um, not advise that for any responsible parent out there. Um, but yes, the car overall, if I had to rate it, I would say um, out of 10 out of 10, I would definitely say this is definitely a 9.5 out of 10. Um, it has the flat bottom steering wheel. It has all of the sport features that any of the modern sport cars have. Um, but it also has the luxury feel. And drivability of a of a luxury car because it is a luxury car um, it has the we talked about I called them I believe blacked out wheels in my very first video they're not actually blacked out what they are is uh, in the prestige edition which this is is not so let me back it up just a bit the the 5 series comes in a variety um, prior to this year I believe in 2013 they went from the 4.2 liter V8 
um, to uh, the three liter turbo, which this car is, or three liter supercharger, I guess you can say, um, supercharged model that this one is. So um, they did a complete facelift in 2013 to this facelift here. Um, they did a few different things. They changed some of the wheels and so forth. These wheels here are actually a titanium gray is what they are. They're not smoke. They're not black. They are a more of a titanium gray. So the car sits on a, on, on the blue that you see titanium gray wheels, black grill. Um, it does have the driving assist and park assist so proximity or what they call for like mercedes is more like their pace setter so you'll know when you're coming up on a vehicle and the car will stop the prestige edition has certain things that the others don't so you have the a5 which comes in the um the 2.0 um and that's the 2.0 turbo the turbo edition in this car uh there have been a lot of complaints about the two liter i haven't driven one maybe i'll see if i can um do a comparison test by um, maybe going to take a test drive in one of the two liters and see exactly how it performs, whether it's the A5, S5, um, not A A5, but uh, S5, but more of an A5, an A4, or A3 that has the two liter turbo in it. Um, even if there's an A6 that has one, I'll be able to kind of go out, take a look, and get an idea of the drivability and capabilities of those vehicles and some of the options. I want to keep apples to apples, so... If I can not find one in a Prestige, I want to do just that, being that this is a Prestige. Even though it's an S5, it's an S5 Prestige, and it comes with certain features that some of the S5 and the Premium or the Premium Plus do not have. Uh, some, of those, some of those features, even though th this car also has navigation, but even though some of the other vehicles don't have the navigation. Let me turn this wide, so maybe this will help a little bit better. Yeah, it does. All right, so even though this car... Uh, is the prestige versus some of the others they do not have certain things that this does um, this also has the uh, blind spot monitoring it has the automatic mirrors let me show you the blind spot monitoring device which should be let me see if i can open the door let me see and you can see it let's see all right okay so the device here is the blind spot monitoring um, device that's located on this. This also has the upgraded infotainment system as well as the, um, the speakers and so forth. It has all of the, um, the, I would say, creature comforts of a luxury vehicle. Um, but yet and still, once again, we, it has the sport driving capabilities of driving a sports car at a moment's notice. The acceleration point is really high on it, even with 300 and I think 333 horsepower in this in the V6. Um, this this particular V6, three liter supercharged, has 333 horsepower with 325 foot pounds of torque. In the Quattro and all wheel drive, this thing is quick off the line. Um, so don't let it fool you. It looks it looks more like a luxury coupe with yeah okay well it's nice but don't let it fool you it will get off the line and get off the line pretty quick um those are just a few of the things that i've discovered since i've actually had the car back in my possession and so i look forward to discovering more things in this vehicle some more of my likes some more of the dislikes um you know again if i could say that there was one flaw and that's why i said 9.5 out of 10 i would say that the only flaw that i really find in this car is the fact that um that there just isn't much room in the back. Um, trunk space is okay for the car. It has the um, like the ski chute pass through. So if you have skis, you can actually load skis in the back. You can actually load some um, you know bags in the car if you're actually looking to um, you know maybe go on a trip or some things like that. Um, but it's it's a it's a nice comfortable daily driver because of the V6, um, and it's not too bad on the gas. But like I said, the only drawback that I could actually really truly find in this car, if there is one, would be, um, you know, the, you know, the back seat area. Um, if you're if you're very tall, which I'm not, uh, then uh, sitting in the back, uh, you can be a bit cramped. Um, you know, small children, like like I said, uh, you know, 
if they're in a car seat, a full blown out car seat, it's going to be a bit rough on the child uh, unless you're adjusting the seats. Um, but then if you have a passenger, then that presents a problem for the passenger. So it's really limited on its capabilities as far as, um, as, 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 far as seating goes. But other than that, um, I think the car is actually a great car. I actually really love the car. It's been on the bucket list and now it's in my possession. Um, we're going to see, uh, if we can, uh, just really just enjoy it. Keep keeping you guys updated on the latest and greatest insights and information that I have on the vehicle. And then, like I said, maybe I can do some comparison tests one against another, but I really want to keep them apples to apples. So I'll be trying to find something that is in a, uh, three liter to go, um, head to head as far as what my likes and dislikes are about that particular model. And then I'll look at some of the two liters and try to give you, um, you know, some points, or at least my viewpoints on what I think of the two liter series versus the three liter series. Um, as we know that the V8 model has now been discontinued. The V8 in this particular car, in the S5 and the RS5, you could actually get that car in a six speed manual. I did hear that prior to this particular model here, before they did the facelift, um, they actually had um, a six speed automatic transmission in this particular car um that particular model in the six speed there were some transmission issues with the six speed this car does not have that transmission this car actually has a seven speed transmission so um the capabilities and uh of the seven speed automatic transmission for this particular car in this particular year are far greater than um the potential of the um, the the version prior to this where they had the six-speed automatic transmission as well as the six-speed manual but anyway that's going to be a wrap for me today if you all want to leave a comment below let me know what your thoughts are about the car i really appreciate it um let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see or any additional content that you'd like me to bring to the channel um I, we welcome to those comments as well all right um Anyway, other than that, I just want to say thank you all again for tuning in to my channel. Thank you all for all the support, and I will look forward to seeing you all on the at the on the next time. All right, well, I'll talk to you soon. Until then, you guys be safe, take care of each other. All right, I'm out.